and welcome again to Give and Take. I'm Jeff Zwerink. This is the segment where we explore the latest scientific ideas to help you be more confident in sharing the gospel. Today, we're joined by Hugh Ross and Ken Samples, and we're going to investigate an important question. Does the existence of carbon require a miracle? Ken, Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Hi, Jeff. Hi. So we're going to be talking, uh, as the show goes, uh, about carbon and how important it is and what we know. But I, I want to delve in first to this idea of a miracle. And if we're explaining carbon and kind of understanding it, doesn't that remove the miraculous nature of it? Ken, what does it mean to, to have a miracle happen? Well, God creates, uh, but he not only creates, he sustains his creation. He guides and directs his creation toward his his sovereign purposes. So that sustaining and guiding and directing, that's providence. And uh, God can have what we might call a ordinary providence or an extraordinary providence. And so carbon would be, uh, the extraordinary nature of carbon would be part of God's ordinary providence. So, so in, in essence, you might be able to say the miraculous is anything God is doing and working, if you will. And so God works in somewhat ordinary means or just how the universe works. And then sometimes he works in extraordinary fashions. That's right. Um, so what would be a sign of some of those extraordinary fashions? What would those look like? Well, obviously, the God calling all matter, energy, space, and time into being from nothing is the most extraordinary act. Uh, but there would be the intervention where God intervenes from the transcendent into the eminent world. But I don't think we want to pass over the idea that the sustaining and controlling is, is any less miraculous. It's mm -hmm. just part of that ordinary, but, but ordinary is in some ways still extraordinary. No, I agree. And, and I want to kind of go back to what you're, you made that distinction there of, you know, God calling all existence into being, you know, that's kind of, almost by nature, beyond the laws of physics or beyond yeah. explanation, sure. if you will. But you also kind of alluded to extraordinary things that we might even be able to have a, a physical understanding of. Yes. How does that work? I mean, does that still remove the miraculous nature of it? I, I don't think it removes it at all. I mean, if you think of the fine tuning that the universe reflects this, this design that allows for the appearance of, of complex life, uh, I would say, even though we can understand a lot of that through the laws of physics, it is the creation of the laws of physics, that whole creation reflects still kind of a miraculous. But, but again, I would see it uh, in terms of providence and an ordinary providence rather than an extraordinary type. Well, let's kind of explore one of those fine tunings. And this is something that, uh, you know, in some sense has been around for many decades. Uh, looking at the existence of carbon, I mean, uh, you know, when I was writing, uh, is there life out there? Just kind of reflecting on how remarkable carbon is in its unique capacity to support life, uh, foundational to life. But yet, even as we look at how the universe behaves, carbon being here is something pretty extraordinary. Can you kind of explain a little bit of that for us, Hugh? Sure. Well, you know, my colleague here is carbon-based, so carbon's important yes, I for, agree. for life. <laughs> but it's a miracle that the universe has any carbon at all, because the universe began with no carbon. All it had was hydrogen, and the first few minutes, about a quarter of that hydrogen got fused into helium, but mm -hmm. still no carbon. And the miracle is that if you take the ground state energy level of helium and take two of those, it equals the ground state energy level of beryllium. Okay, okay, so let's kind of hash that out a little bit. So we got to take two helium, put them together, and we're going to get beryllium. But well, you, that, how does that help in carbon, if you will? Well, helium is a nuclear weight of four. It's got okay. two protons and two neutrons. Right. Okay, beryllium is eight. Mm -hmm. So four plus four equals eight. But you won't get four plus four making eight unless the ground state energy levels of two helium equal very closely that of beryllium. And it does. So that means you can actually get beryllium and stars, and then the next step is adding a helium uh, nucleus to a beryllium to get carbon. So, so it, it, in essence, it, it, uh, by having that beryllium, it, you can take two carbons, get them together, and so instead of having all three of them come together, it kind of gives you an intermediate step that allows that reaction to carbon ultimately to go faster. Right, so the two heliums come together to make beryllium, the beryllium and a helium come together to make carbon, 
that all works because of how incredibly fine-tuned uh, the energy levels are uh, for helium, for beryllium, and for carbon. And, and so this is kind of going back to what Ken was saying, that God has sustained the universe either so reliably we talk about the laws of physics. These energy levels are ultimately dependent upon the laws of physics, are they not? They are. And without that fine-tuning of those laws of physics and those ground state energy levels, there wouldn't be any carbon in the universe at all, and there'd be no Ken samples, mm. which would be a real disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> so when we talk about carbon, I mean, I think even getting to have, or having the process to make carbon is important, but I think there's even more beyond that. There is. So that it doesn't all disappear in some other fashion. Well... In order for Ken samples to exist, you need roughly equal amounts of carbon and oxygen. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful about the ground state energy levels of carbon, and they're slightly different, but if you actually were to make them equal, what would happen is all that carbon would become oxygen. So we'd have lots of oxygen, mm -hmm. but no carbon. Because that's like where you take the beryllium and add the helium to it, it makes carbon. You take carbon and add an, a helium to it, and it makes oxygen. Uh, yeah, you take the carbon, the helium, you get oxygen, and yeah, the ground state energy levels are, are, are really uh, very close to one mm -hmm. another. All that carbon gets moved into oxygen. On the other hand, if you make them too far apart from one another, then what you wind up with is lots of carbon and no oxygen. You need lots of both. And because of how they're uh, tuned to very exacting levels, we get roughly equal amounts of carbon and oxygen. It really does sound like the tuning is pretty remarkable because you've got to have the tuning in order for carbon to be produced, but then you also have to have things tuned so that all that carbon doesn't just immediately convert Car into oxygen. To oxygen right. And so now you've got kind of that balance of the two, which, you know, without carbon and oxygen, you don't get carbon dioxide, you don't get water, and all the, all the things that are critical for life. That's right. You know, it really is remarkable that when we look at this universe, it is sustained very reliably and consistently. And that's uh, what Ken was talking about with that providence, that God is at work in sustaining creation. But we also see as we investigate it and delve in that creation is very well designed or fine tuned, if you will, in order to produce the things that life relies on. And that we see God's signature in that. And we can look and it really is a remarkable, miraculous thing. You know, I want to encourage you to go. Hugh has written an article called uh, Carbon, the Miracle Element, where you can explore that more deeply. But what you will find is as you read that article, you will be equipped to see how God has designed this creation for us to be here. And you will have tools that will allow you to engage in conversations where you can bring the gospel and share Christ with your friends.